What's up everybody? Zach here with Review Empire and tonight we are cooking uh, one of my favorite things in the world, the ribeye steak. And so I know most of you that like ribeye, if you want to know how to cook a ribeye, you probably googled how to cook a ribeye and you probably came to this video. And So guess what? It's gonna be good. Of course, you might have just been wanting to know what does this stuff taste like? I didn't even know this existed. I didn't last week, but I love Longhorn steaks, man, if, if I'm gonna go to town and I'm gonna get a steak and I'm gonna pay somebody else to make me a steak and it's gonna be like a chain restaurant, somewhere where they've got lots of good sides and lots of good drinks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You can't always go to the local place. They ain't got all that. But anyway, I'm gonna go to Longhorn. I'm getting that porterhouse or I'm getting a ribeye. And both of them are delicious. And come to find out, they sell their seasoning. So if you're curious about this and you want to try it, or you're wondering like, what's up with that Longhorn Steakhouse seasoning? Does it taste like what I get in the restaurant? Well, guess what? Today we're going to find out. Today's my first time. What I have decided to do with this one to kind of mimic how I think they cook ribeyes at the Longhorn Steakhouse is I have done a dry brine. I rinse my steaks off with cold water took paper towels, I patted them dry, I let them sit for a couple minutes, then I went on with some coarse grain salt. I use Himalayan pink salt because for the most part that's what's sitting on the counter. I do have some of this really thick kosher salt that I'm able to use, but I usually use that more on like ribs and stuff. I don't, I don't necessarily, I think it's too, too gritty for a steak. Anyway, I use this and I put this on there after the salt had been on there for about an hour just kind of letting that salt penetrate. At that point in time, I put a nice coat of this Longhorn Steakhouse Grill Seasoning. Remember, when your brain tells you that's probably enough to make it taste pretty good, do another layer that thick. Just put seasoning on your steak, okay? And so then I put them in the fridge and just let them brine for about an hour and a half, two hours while I cut some grass. Y'all might notice that I'm filthy. But we got some really pretty ribeyes here. My process with these ribeyes is gonna be just a short amount of time on each side. Y'all can see that they're different sizes for me and my wife, different thicknesses. So we're gonna just be kind of playing it by ear. You kind of want to be careful with that if you don't know how to cook a steak real good because you can, you know, it's really hard to get the desired doneness on different thicknesses of steaks. You have to kind of be able to feel it and look at it a little bit and that helps. So we're going to talk about that later in this video. But after they are done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some unsalted butter melted and we're going to pour that over the steak because if you've ever been to Longhorn, you know that when they bring your steak out, there are puddles of butter on that steak. And so, I mean, even if you kind of mess up cooking a little bit, even if this isn't all that good, you take the flavor of grilled beef and salt and butter and put it together. I mean, if you mess that up, I don't even know what to say. Like, we need to call Dr. Strange or somebody because something's up. I know what I'm saying. Y'all know about Dr. Strange? Is that his name? Dr. Who? Is that who I'm talking about in the phone booth? Oh, yeah. Who is that? Dr. Who. <laughs> so, if y'all know about Dr. Who, we need to call Dr. Who. Because if y'all mess this steak up, putting butter and salt and grilling marks on it, then I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But call Dr. Who, not Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange might be able to fix it, too. That dude, that's a guy off Avengers. Take your pick. First of all, don't mess this steak up though. Let's be honest, okay? All right, so we're about to head down to the grill. My charcoals are probably burning up as we speak. I gotta get back down there. We'll see y'all in a bit. If you haven't watched my video about this grill cleaning brush that doesn't have metal bristles, I'll leave a link to that below. It works great. 
all right so we're out here tonight cooking some ribeye steaks and i'm going to teach y'all a very secrety secret secret something that i have come up with on my own as far as i know i haven't seen anybody else do it remember you saw it here first review empire possibly empire smoke let me know what you think about that in the comments below if you haven't already hit the like button consider becoming a subscriber to my channel all right so i'm going to show y'all a very secretive secret about how to get just that extra on your steaks all right so what i've got here is some pre-soaked hickory chips okay i only soaked them for about two minutes what i'm going to do is i'm going to dance these bad boys all over my coals and just let them burn okay all that's cleared off we're going to put that right there and what we're going to do we're going to give those just a second to heat up once you see that smoke starting to kick out we're going to take that steak and we're going to lay it right here where it's nice and clean and we're going to lay this one right here where it's nice and clean and then guess what we're going to do we're going to shut it down we're going to shut it down we want all that smoke and some people are going to say oh it's dirty smoke it's dirty smoke well, guess what we're only getting two minutes maybe three minutes of penetration look at all that smoke rolling off of there this is an excellent opportunity if you haven't already to smash the like button and get a sip of lemonade lemonade's good we're getting to this about two or three minutes if you don't have a good internal clock i highly recommend that you get you a digital clock much more reliable i have messed up many times some of you will ask where did you get your wood chips these are cowboy brand hickory chips okay and i'll leave a link to those below i'm pretty sure we picked these up off of amazon if not i think they also sell them at academy sports i'll try to leave links to that below as well all right so we are at the three minute mark to be honest with you probably 245 something like that but you don't want to overdo it we're just getting some smoke it's i call this the kiss of smoke technique okay you heard it here first it's my technique kiss of smoke i've opened up my grill all the way and got all of my vents letting air through you're going to watch this wood start to catch on fire as the charcoals heat back up and then what we're going to do oh you just got to love the way that hickory wood smells but what we're going to do is we're going to move this up if you're cooking on this exact grill what i'm doing is i'm moving it to the third knot if you're learning how to cook a steak on this grill let me tell you something you're about to become level up you ever heard the term level up you're about to level up on your ribeyes okay and so we're going to let that heat up these grates we got our butter here just anxiously awaiting the steak and we're going to give that about another 30 seconds let it get good and hot all right so we got a really hot coal bed going and that's what you want you want to be able to get a sear on your steak without having to leave it there for multiple minutes because really and truthfully two three minutes each side may, maybe four minutes depending on how you like your steak and the thickness you know all this kind of varies with the thickness but this right here is a nice hot cold bed we've got nice hot grate I'm about to put these bad boys on the heat now i did the dry brine so what that means is that i'm going to get a much better bark because there's not as much water on the surface of my steaks which means that it's not going to create as much steam and when you have less steam you get more crunchy you want to make sure that you press it down onto the grate to help you with your grill marks a little bit and also to help you get some sear as anyone watching this video can see my wife's steak is a size small than mine that's how she likes it and it's a little bit thinner so i'm not going to be able to give hers the full three minutes i'm going to be able to give it maybe two and then maybe two on the other side just to get a nice medium to medium rare steak mine's going to be about three minute each side something like that three and a quarter at the thickness that it's at so we're looking at a one inch steak and we're looking at a maybe a five eight three quarter inch steak i don't think it's three quarter i think it's closer to five eight and we are now coming up on the one and a half minute mark we've got some good flames kicking up giving our steak a little kiss and so we're going to flip it we're going to see we've got a nice sear on that side that's going to look awesome on the plate oh my gosh so good so i like how this longhorn steakhouse season and sort of blackened up the steak it did good put a nice color on it you hate to put season on a steak and see it come out like tan or you know just bland looking you want all this color okay so that's been about 45 seconds that puts us about the two and a half, three minute mark on this one. And we're going to flip it. It's a little thicker, so we'll give it more time. I mean, those are looking what you want. Now, I don't have grill grates. I know you're going to watch a lot of people cooking, and then you're going to look up grill grates, and you're going to see how expensive they are, and you're going to think, ah, maybe later. That's what I've done. I plan on getting some, but right now I'm thinking, man, maybe later. I don't care nearly as much how it looks as much as how it tastes. That's to me, is the most important thing. Coming up on the two minute mark on the other side of this state we're gonna go ahead and give it a look and i can just tell you just from feel and you'll get better at that just from feel 
that that steak's where I want it. I mean, I could give it another 30 seconds or so, but I think that that steak's where I want it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm putting butter on top of it, okay? I'm gonna do this twice. I'm doing it right now, and then I'm doing it right before it gets plated. This is how you get that uh, Texas Longhorn steak. So that's not quite where I want it. I'm gonna flip it back over. I think I was a little bit premature on that one anyway. I'll just kind of go and by feel here. I'm gonna go ahead, and butter that bad boy up. Just like that. You're gonna see an increase in flame when you add the butter, which is gonna help to add that char to your steak. And then I'm gonna flip it over just for like maybe 10 seconds, just so I can put a little bit of butter on this side. And so we've got a lot better color on it than we had just a minute ago. And that's it. All right, so I'm, I'm feeling like these steaks are right where I want them to be. They both got butter on them. We got butter, baby. I'm about to take these things upstairs, let them rest for about five minutes. We're gonna reapply butter, and then we're gonna plate them and eat them. Steaks are nice because they're quick and they're good. We'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, so these steaks have been breathing for a little while, and now we are ready to cut it up and see what's up on the inside of this ribeye. Remember, this is the kiss of smoke ribeye and what you want to do when you're getting ready to cut a steak is you want to say where is the grain of the steak and if you've done it right you can just do what i'm doing and you can just sort of see where it's at and you want to cut across that grain and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little bit of butcher work here and cut this and then you want to go across the grain right there and what I was looking for is about a medium, medium rare steak, something like that. You can see that's exactly what we got. It's just a great looking piece of meat. And so now we're gonna cut just to the center of the steak and see what we're working with. You can see that. So if you follow the method that I taught you, you kind of have to, you know, some skills required as well to make sure that you get that steak where you want it. And you kind of have to get a feel for thickness and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, but you will get there. I'm just gonna cut this up a little bit. If you've ever served steak, then that's great. If you've ever served steak cut up to somebody, well, they had a really good experience. There's something special about having it cut up for you. I don't know if y'all have ever been to like a Brazilian steakhouse or something like that, but. All right, so this is just a little extra butter that we had. And we're just gonna drizzle that over the steak and a little bit of the au jus. And then what I wanna do is this is gonna give you a serious flavor kick. Some people do salt at the end, but this is what I season the steak with. And I'm just going over it, just, just a light little dusting. And I promise you one thing, we're about to have a really, just a really good bite. I'm so pumped up about this bite. Are y'all pumped up? about this bite oh, make sure that you just your first bite always your first bite make sure that you roll it around in everything that you put on it to make it taste good so that it's like the best bite oh dear god that tastes so much like a longhorn steak like you can close your eyes and you're just like, hey, I'm at a long steakhouse. I got no complaints. But man, that's what they put on it. <laughs> that's what they put on it. I'm getting some dirty looks. I think I have to have to give, give a bite to my wife. Mm -hmm. You thought you, you thought you were gonna get that bite, didn't you? <laughs> you can't get that bite. This is a video. You know that. My honest opinion, this plus a little bit of salt and the kiss of smoke technique that I taught you in this video produces a fine ribeye. You know, I don't think you can necessarily follow the times exactly because it all depends on how thick the steak is. If you ever watch a video and they're like, yeah, stick to these times exactly, they have told you something that's probably, you know, might be a good guide, probably is gonna get you an overcooked steak. We're about to add this in to this plate of homegrown tomatoes and homegrown banana pepper. Making a bit of a mess, but that's okay. It's Friday night, it's ribeye night. Ain't nothing wrong with any of that. 
If you got some value from this video, if you learned something, if you got any questions, please help me out with YouTube. Smash that like button for me. And, uh, you know, just hit the subscribe button so you can get more content like this. If you cook this steak the way I cooked it, you're a subscriber. You're going to love me. You're going to love me. Hope you're all having a great night, and we'll see y'all in the next video. You know, what do you call it? Really thick salt. And I don't know if y'all got house flies right now, but dad gum it. You can't keep them out. You cannot keep them out. So if you see a house fly, we don't have a nasty house, but we got house flies right now. Tell y'all something. I am about to start a Patreon, I think. If anybody has ideas of things that would help me make a Patreon sort of worth it, you know, like, like what would make you be okay sending me like $2 a month or $10 a month, $20 a month. I'm looking for ideas. I got no clue like what sort of content to offer, but I need to have money so I can buy knives and thermostats and give reviews and cook stuff and go just go buy a brisket because I got the money coming in to buy it. So if you are, would be interested in something like that, just let me know and tell me what sort of stuff would make it worth.